Hello students, welcome to our next lectures on our lecture series that is on the two and three wheeler technologies. Right, so in the case of the two and three vehicles, in this for the series we will see about the steering and the suspension systems that is used in the two wheelers. So in the case of the two wheelers, the steering and suspension system or in any vehicle, these two things are always interconnected. If we change anything in the suspension system, then the steering geometry will be changed and we will have to adjust the geometry as well. So we will always learn these two systems simultaneously so that we can discuss about the effects of the one system on the other one as well. So in the case of the steering and suspension system of the two wheelers, let's start our lecture series on this chapter number 4. In the case of the steering geometry for the two wheelers vehicles. In the case of the steering geometry of the four wheelers, in the previous semester of the automobile system subject, we saw about the steering geometry. In that we learnt about the camber angle, caster angle, towing, tow out and the sleep angle and the ordinary force. All these factors we learnt in the subject that is automobile systems and in that we saw about the four wheeler system steering geometry. In the case of the steering geometry of the two wheelers, there are mainly three factors that needs to be considered for the working or for the stability of the vehicle. The first one is the trail, the second one is the caster or also known as the rack angle and the third one is the wheel base. Right, the caster angle or the rack angle, the definition or the angle that we measure will be similar to the four wheelers. Right, the angle of the steering axis with the vertical center line of the tire, that angle will be known as the caster angle in the case of the two wheelers as well. The trail is similar to the scrub radius that we saw in the case of the four wheelers. Also, we will see in the detail and the wheel base will be same as the four wheelers is the distance between two center lines of the front tire and the rear tire of the two wheelers. In the case of the steering geometry, here in the diagram you can see that the trail and the rack angle has been shown for the two wheelers. At the front side, the value of the trail will be the distance between the two intersecting points. Right? Which intersecting points is that the steering axis and the road surface, one point at that intersection and the second intersection will be the center line and the road surface. The distance between the, these two intersecting points will be known as the trail. The caster angle is the angle which is made by the steering axis with the center line or the center vertical line of the tire that will be known as the caster angle or also known as the rack angle. In the rear bike or in the rear motorcycle, here you can imagine the values of the angles that we are learning. The first one is the trail. Again, the trail is the distance between the two intersecting points of the steering axis and the vertical center line with the road surface. The caster angle is the angle that is made by the steering axis with the vertical center line. Also, the wheel base you can see is the distance between front tire and the rear tire. Now, in this, you can see one extra factor or extra geometry factor is shown that is known as offset. Now, what is offset? Then, the offset value is the distance of the steering axis that has been changed from the center of the vertical line. Right. In the normal position, the center of the vertical line and the steering axis should be equal. But to adjust the different factors, if the steering axis is kept little bit on the behind side, then there will be some distance that is being really steering axis pushed to the rear side. That is known as the offset that is being given to the steering axis. The main factors that needs to be discussed for the performance of the two wheelers are the trail, 
wheel base and the rack angle. So let's see all three factors in detail. The first one is the train. All the train, the figure you can see here, in the top part you can see the angle that steering axis makes and the vertical line. These two lines intersect at the road surface. So there will be a distance between these two points that is known as trail. If the steering axis is ahead than the vertical line, that you can see in the figure. In this figure, the steering axis is in front of the vertical line, then the trail will be known as positive trail. If the distance or if the steering axis is behind the vertical line, then it will be known as the negative trail. Same as the caster angle that is shown in the four wheelers. Right. So in this case, we will almost use always the positive trail value. Now, why trail is given? And there are also two types of trail. Right. Let's first discuss about the types of trail. In that first one is the normal trail, or the second one is the rear trail. Right. The normal trail is measured at the road surface or will be measured parallel to the road surface. If we talk about the rear tail, in that case, the tail will be measured perpendicular to the steering axis. Right? One axis will be taken off from the intersecting point that is vertical line and road surface intersecting point. From that, we will take the line perpendicular to the steering axis and that will be known as the rear tail. Generally, the factor that will be adjusted is the normal trail, which is measured normal to the road surface. Right? You can see the trail that is being shown is the normal trail. Also, for the front tire, that is known as the front trail. In the case of the trails, why it is given? The trail gives us the straight ahead stability to the vehicle. Whenever we are driving the two wheeler, the stability will be provided by this trail distance because whenever we turn the vehicle in left side or right side the angle will be created you can see in the figure below that when we are taking the turn towards the left side the tire will be turned so the angle will be created by the tire line and the vertical center line that angle will be known as the slip angle that we also saw in the case of the four wheelers as well. So because of the slip angle, one force will be generated that is known as the restoring force in case of the two wheelers. The tendency of the restoring force is to get the vehicle be back to its straight position. Right. So the help of the trail is that if the value of trail is increased, then the force for the the uh, tire getting back to its normal position will also increase, which means the value of restoring force will increase. Right? Up to a certain point, the value can be used or can be overturned by the driver, but after a certain value, the vehicle will not be able to go in the straight direction and the restoring force will be overpowered. So the effort of the driver will increase if the trail is increased. But increasing trail gives us the better cornering ability. Right? Easily the two wheelers can be turned if the trail is more. So in the case of the racing motorcycles, the value of trail will be more compared to the normal two wheelers. Second point is the caster angle. In the case of the caster angle or in the case of the rack angle, you can see the angle between the steering axis and the vertical line that is known as the caster angle. In the case of the caster angle, there are chances that by keeping the value of the trail constant, we can change the values of the caster angle. You can see the three cases have been shown. In that case, the first one is that the hop type in which the hop center steering, in which the steering axis passes from the center of the hub, in which the value of trail is given. In the second case, the offset is given to the steering axis in just the rear side. So in that case, the value of rack stays constant. 
the only way to change this is the caster angle caster angle is more compared to the first case and in the third case what we have seen is the steering axis and the vertical line both are parallel to the each other in that case value of trail is also constant the value of caster angle will be zero right or you can say 180 degrees so in the three cases we can apply the value of the rack angle by keeping the trail constant now what is the function of caster is the same that we saw in the formulas as well is that when the steering axis is leading our vehicle right you can see that the axis of steering is ahead than the vertical axis so which means that steering axis is leading our vehicle so because of that whenever we steer the vehicle or whenever driver steer the vehicle then the stability will be better compared to the negative caster value so in almost all the vehicles the value of the caster will be positive in case of the two wheelers as well last case is wheel base right now the wheel base is the simply distance between the two center of the tires in the case of the two wheelers now if wheel base needs to be larger or smaller there are two cases if the wheel base is smaller in the figure you can see the turning radius will be smaller if wheel base is larger the turning radius will be more but in case of the larger wheel base the advantage is that that the stability will be better the turning can be easily done and also the load transfer will be smaller compared to the smaller wheel base right because the load will not be transferred as much as the smaller wheel base in case of the larger wheel base criteria right because there will be more distance between the rear and front tire and during the acceleration and braking the load can be transferred from the rear to the front side that can be avoided if the larger turning radius is used in the case of the smaller turning radius the advantage is that the turning radius is smaller wheel base is smaller and also the maneuverability is also easier in case of the smaller wheel base so depending on the requirement wheel base will be decided so in this video we saw three factors that is required for the steering geometry for the two wheelers in the next one we will see further about the steering of the two wheelers until then thank you so much